Hey there, killer awesome viewers. It's Shep here, and it's time for another Shep Reacts. And this is actually a uh, different kind of Shep Reacts, and a special one, as a matter of fact, because this is one that you, the viewers, have voted on. A little while ago, I put up a poll on five different video ideas that we can do a reaction to, and you voted for this one. So these videos are created by AI. We can pretty much do anything that we want and AI will put it together and I don't I don't watch it until I'm ready to record the reaction. So I have not seen whatever is about to come up and that happens to be medieval hipsters live authentic old lives. Old with an E at the end of old. <laughs> old E lives? I don't know. Let's watch the video. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Medieval times were grim. Life expectancy hovered somewhere around died in infancy. But you know what else is grim? Our current year, whatever. <laughs> okay, this, uh, this music. Where the hell did it pull up this music from? This is freaking funny. <laughs> For year that happens to be. So, who are we to judge people who thought a chamber pot was the pinnacle of modern plumbing? The point is, maybe we're more alike than we realize. Take medieval hipsters, for example. Okay, the music that's playing and this. <laughs> is it me or does it seem like the music is coming from these folks right here. I don't know. Sometimes the funny thing with this AI is that the imagery it pulls up is uh, interesting, to say the least. Medieval hipsters, for example. They're like the ghosts of trends past, haunting us with their ironic loops and artisanal mead. A bizarre fusion of chainmail and skinny jeans, they roam Renaissance fairs, searching for the most authentically inauthentic experience. <laughs> Think you've seen peak hipster? Wait till you see a dude in tights complaining his <laughs> locally sourced, hand forged broadsword isn't ethically <laughs> uh, A dude in tights? And this guy here. I mean. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you shall not pass! And the best part? They're utterly, hilariously oblivious. Because let's be honest, nothing screams I'm unique like embracing a lifestyle from centuries ago. It's like they raided a history museum's gift shop after a three-day mead bender. Hey, he's kind their of like... commitment to historical accuracy? <laughs> let's just say they're more concerned... He's whispering. ...is gluten-free than historically accurate. But hey, at least they're not hurting anyone. Well, unless you count the second-hand embarrassment of watching someone try to haggle over the price of a turkey leg in full old English. Still, we have to give them points for commitment. Imagine dedicating your life to recreating the good old days when bathing was considered a once-a-year extravagance. <laughs> Speaking of questionable life choices, let's talk about medieval hipster knights. Gone are the days of shining armor and valiant quests. These days, it's all about distressed chainmail and ironic facial hair. Imagine a knight more concerned <laughs> with the ethical sourcing of his armor than slaying dragons. That's our guy. He probably has a favorite <laughs> local meadery, too. And don't even get me started on the jousting tournaments. They've traded in their steeds... Oh, that's pictures, cool! ...their lances for locally roasted coffee beans. Okay, this is cool. I mean, come on, this look here of the knight and the sword on the uh, the chopper. <laughs> That's just plain cool right there. I like that. Their idea of a dangerous quest is trying to find parking at the Renaissance Fair. <laughs> They're basically walking contradictions, fierce warriors who wouldn't hurt a fly. Unless that fly was buzzing around their artisanal cheese plate. <laughs> but don't be fooled by their <laughs> ironic detail. Here, have a drink. Underneath those meticulously groomed beards and hand-stitched tunics beats the heart of a true romantic. They long for a simpler time, a time when you could woo a fair maiden with a sonnet and a well-placed lute solo. Of course, they also probably complain about the lack of Wi-Fi in castles, 
and the fact that their iPhones don't work with gauntlets. It's a tough life being a medieval hipster knight, but someone's got to do it. After all, who else is going to defend the realm from bad beer and inauthentic chainmail? The fate of the kingdom, or at least the Renaissance fair, rests on their meticulously crafted pauldrons. Ah, the jester. Historically, the jester was the comedic relief in a king's court, paid to make fun of the powerful. Medieval hipsters have put their own unique spin on this. Their jesters are less fools and more performance artists, slinging sarcasm instead of pratfalls. They're masters of irony, their jokes so obscure you need a degree in medieval history to understand them. Their jokes are less about slapstick <laughs> and more about social commentary. They'll hit you with a zinger about the feudal system one minute, then launch into a ten-minute monologue about the existential dread of being a medieval peasant. Don't expect any cheap laughs here, unless you count the absurdity of watching someone in a jester's hat quote Nietzsche. They're the ultimate hipsters, mocking the very thing they embody. They're the embodiment of self-awareness, constantly winking at the audience as if to say, we know this is ridiculous, but we're in on the joke. And maybe that's the point. Maybe the joke is on us for not being in on the joke, or maybe they're just really, really bored. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Being a jester in the age of... Gandalf? Well, Gandalf, tough. hold on. How do you compete? It looks like it says Gandalf. Hold on, look at this. Gan Gandole, Gandole. But, you know, you put an F there and you got Gandalf. I know, I know, I'm reaching, but, yeah, you know, it's something I just noticed, that's all. Being a jester in the age of TikTok must be tough. How do you compete <laughs> with dancing cats and viral trends when your main source of entertainment is a loot and a whoopee cushion? It's enough to make you want to join a monastery, or at least start a podcast. And what would a medieval hipster be without their trusty artisanal blacksmith? These guys are the rock stars of the Renaissance fair circuit. They've elevated blacksmithing to an art form, crafting everything from hand-forged bottle openers to bespoke chainmail bikinis. Forget swords and armor, these guys are all about bespoke fireplace pokers and designer horseshoes. Their workshops are more like art studios filled with the scent of beeswax and the sound of indie folk music. They're not just blacksmiths, they're artisans, crafting each piece with love, care, and a healthy dose of irony. They're the type of people who can make a pair of tongs look like they belong in the Museum of Modern Art. Of course, all this artistry comes at a price. Don't expect to walk out of their shop without dropping a week's wages on a hand-forged cheese knife. But hey, at least you can tell your friends you bought it from a real blacksmith. Never mind that he probably drives a Prius and listens to NPR on his way to the forge. <laughs> but hey, who are we to judge? They're keeping an ancient craft alive, even if they're doing it while wearing skinny jeans and listening to Bon Iver. And let's be honest, we'd all probably be a little more impressed if our local coffee shop had a hand-forged espresso machine. Let's talk about food, shall we? Because no exploration of medieval hipsters would be complete without a deep dive into their culinary habits. Forget avocado toast and matcha lattes. These guys are all about mead-infused cocktails and forged mushroom tarts. Imagine a world where every meal is a renaissance fair feast. Where every bite is an Instagram opportunity. Where you can order a meat <laughs> well, with tasting note. Okay, uh, something about this image. <laughs> we have a ghost in a haunted house over here over the side. <laughs> Not a quite fitting with this uh, video, but... Uh, still kind of interesting that AI decided to, to pull this up. <laughs> Where you can order a mead flight with tasting notes like hints of elderflower and notes of leather and chain mail. It's enough to make you lose your appetite. And don't even get me started on the medieval brunch scene. It's like a scene... <laughs> yeah, something with these AI videos that I've noticed, a lot of it will say, don't get me started. Or it will say, picture this. So, if you see, like, documentaries on YouTube and you hear, you hear the narrator say, picture this, or don't even get me started, okay? It's an AI video. So, the thing about these videos here is that 
we can do whatever we want. I mean, it's not like we're doing a documentary on one specific thing. We can do whatever we want. We can do a video on door handles or something, you know, or um, fingernails or uh, cat food on a floor. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we could uh, cables, you know, like a, like uh, like a cable like this. Uh, plugging a cable like this into your toaster. You know, what, what would happen if you plug your a USB cable into a toaster. So, you know, we can we can do things serious. We could do things wacky and crazy. We can do anything. Um, and I think that's what makes this great is because we don't have to take it seriously. We can have fun with it. So I know some people out there are totally against AI. I don't have a problem with AI because I see it as a tool. It's a tool that that you can use to express yourself and you know to do something hey uh you know before there was photography there was paint so you know all the painters and stuff you know when they finally came up with photography you know where they just oh that's just cheating you know it how's that any different than ai ai is just a tool it's it's how you use it and we're using it in a different kind of way um here in this series but yeah i just kind of wanted to let you know that that you know if you see a documentary that's on a you know that's on another channel and you hear those keywords picture this or don't even get me started it's ai <laughs> it's it's created by by this ai thing it's like a scene out of a monty python sketch you've got your night's nursing hangovers with mead bloody mary's your ladies in waiting, Instagramming their foraged berry pancakes, and your court jesters <laughs> cracking wise about the absurdity of it all. Stare at that. <laughs> of course, no medieval hipster meal is complete without a healthy dose of pretension. Expect to hear phrases like farm to table and locally sourced thrown around with reckless abandon. Because nothing says authentic medieval experience like a dollar twenty plate of artisanal gruel. It's enough to make you long for the days of simple peasant food. You know, back when people were too busy dying of dysentery to worry about whether their bread was gluten-free. Jeez. My goodness. Speaking of food, we can't forget the culinary abomination that is Renaissance fair food. I'm talking about those giant turkey legs that are somehow both greasy and dry at the same time. Yeah, they are dry. The kind of food that makes you wonder if you're eating it for sustenance or for the experience. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I get it. Renaissance fairs are supposed to transport you back in time, but I'm pretty sure they didn't have deep fryers in medieval England. Okay, yeah, you know, got kind of a point. I've had one of those uh, turkey legs at a Renaissance festival before, and because I was thinking, oh, it's got it's big. I see people get it all the time. I think it's dry. It is dry. It is <laughs> I would never get another one. It's just it's dry. I don't. I didn't like it. Um, but one of my favorite things to get at a Renaissance festival are bread bowls. Bread bowls that have uh, like soup in it, or sometimes they have a uh, like a dip, like a spinach dip or something in there. Oh, those are great. I love the clam chowder ones, or the uh, like, the, uh, I think they have like a seafood, uh, uh, like, uh, like a seafood chowder uh, bowl or something like that. And oh, it is just so good. That's my favorite thing. Um, at the at, a, at the Renaissance Festival, is that authentic? I probably not, but <laughs> it's it's much better than that big turkey leg that's all dry and everything. And I highly doubt they were serving up funnel cakes and deep fried Oreos alongside their roasted meats. Yeah, probably not. And yet, year after year, we line up for these culinary delights. We shell out exorbitant amounts of money for food that would make a medieval peasant gag. We convince ourselves that it's all part of the experience that we're somehow connecting with our ancestors through the magic of deep fried dough. <laughs> but let's be honest, we're fooling ourselves. Renaissance fair food is the culinary equivalent of a cheap Halloween costume. Uh, I don't know about that. The real thing designed to give us a taste of the past without any of the authenticity. 
it almost sounds like this uh, narrator, I, I know it's AI, but it almost sounds like they're kind of ragging on the Renaissance Festival. You know, I, I like the Renaissance Festival. I, I think it's fun. I think it's fun. I actually, I would love to do a uh, Killer Awesome Day uh, video at the Renaissance Festival. Uh, I think that would be cool. That's something that I really would would like to do. I think that would be uh, a killer video. <laughs> but perhaps the most puzzling aspect of the medieval hipster trend is the resurgence of plague doctors? Yes, you heard that right. Those creepy beak-nosed figures who roam the streets. I was wondering what the heck that thing are was. Now the unexpected style icons of the 21st century. It seems that nothing says fashion forward like dressing up as a harbinger of death <laughs> and disease. Okay, so uh, the next time you see people walking around in uh, face masks, um, now you have something to think about. <laughs> You've exhausted every other fashion trend from normcore to seapunk. You eventually end up at apocalyptic chic. And who knows? Maybe there's something to be said for embracing the macabre. She doesn't After look all, happy. We live in a world where climate change is threatening to wipe us out, and politicians are arguing about the best way to dismantle democracy. Maybe dressing up as a plague doctor is That's a little too close to home. Existential dread of it all. Or maybe people just like wearing masks. After all, it's a lot easier to hide your identity behind a beak-nosed mask than it is to face the world as your true flawed self. Okay, what's the real message of this video? <laughs> this is kind of creepy. That it just... It, I have no idea that it was going to come up with this stuff about a mask. You know, and, it, and it, at first it's talking about uh, just the masks in general. And then it starts showing images of people wearing face masks. And what the AI what it's actually saying it's kind of it's a little creepy plus you can totally get away with not making eye contact love in the time of cholera try love in the time of the black death that's the reality for medieval hipsters navigating the treacherous waters of modern dating forget tinder and bumble these singles are relying on handwritten scrolls and carrier pigeons to find their soulmate. Imagine trying to explain your love of mead making and falconry on a first date. Or the challenges of finding <laughs> a partner who shares your passion for medieval reenactments. Yeah, if you manage to find someone like that on a first date, you probably just met your lifetime partner. <laughs> Consider yourselves lucky. It's enough to make you want to swear off dating altogether and join a monastery. Nah. Hey, at least they don't have to worry about ghosting. Because when you're courting someone via carrier pigeon, you can be pretty sure they're not going to disappear on you without a trace. Unless, of course, they succumb to the plague. But hey, maybe that's all part of the appeal. After all, nothing says romance like the threat of a deadly pandemic. It certainly adds a sense of urgency. Once again, what to... is the real message here? <laughs> so, what does this medieval hipster trend say about us? Are we simply a society so starved for authenticity that we're willing to romanticize even the most unpleasant periods of history? Or are we just a bunch of easily amused idiots who will latch on to any trend that promises to make us feel special? Yeah, that's probably the Maybe real truth. <laughs> Maybe we're drawn to the past because it offers a sense of escape from the complexities of modern life. Or maybe... Yeah, you know, when it comes to wanting to stay in the past and stuff, uh, I kind of feel like that with, you know, a lot of video games and stuff because I like... I've been enjoying going back and just playing a lot of these old games, even games that I haven't even played before. So for those of you that are here on this channel for some other things that I do... Uh, there's a lot of retro games uh, that I've been uh, putting up on the channel. Uh, for example, on Thursdays is uh, Throwback Thursdays. And so I've been doing things like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Atari, uh, Commodore 64, Commodore Amiga, ColecoVision, and Television. 
all kinds of things. So, I mean, if you love that retro gaming, Thursdays is going to be the day for you. Hopefully you're here for every day because I <laughs> I like to have fun stuff uh, every day of the week. And I have a schedule that uh, I stick to for the most part. Everything comes out on a specific day and a specific time and at a certain uh, week of the month. And I try to keep that uh, consistent. But as far as being in the past, uh, that's kind of like me with, with gaming. Or maybe we're just looking for a way to express our individuality in an increasingly homogenized world. Whatever the reason, there's no denying that the medieval hipster trend is a fascinating reflection of our times. It's a trend that's both absurd and strangely endearing. A reminder that even in the age of the internet and social media, we're still drawn to the simple pleasures of <laughs> mead, merriment, and the, the music. plague. We're all just medieval hipsters okay. and waiting. <laughs> We've all got our quirks. Some of us collect stamps, some of us do crossfit, and some of us dress up like we're about to storm a castle. <laughs> to each their own, I guess. <laughs> but the next time you see a group of medieval hipsters LARPing in the park, don't be so quick to judge. They might be on to something. Maybe there's something to be said for embracing the absurd, Oof. for finding joy in the unexpected. Or maybe they're just really, really bad at history. Either way, they're keeping things interesting. And in a world that often feels like it's teetering on the brink of chaos, maybe that's all that matters. Okay, so that was uh, an interesting video. Not uh, overly funny, but interesting. Uh, this doesn't seem like something I would see anywhere. You know, yeah, you see uh, documentaries on a Renaissance festival and stuff like that, but this, this just had a different type of uh, take on it. So it was just interesting, just kind of watching it from that from that perspective. Not all of these videos are are going to be overly funny. Some will just be interesting, you know, and that's okay. You know, these don't have to be hilarious documentaries. They they can be interesting documentaries. They can be mockumentaries. They could be something completely uh, who knows what. But that's the fun of this series is that. I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be new for me watching it just as it's new for you. And so we get to enjoy it together. Anyways, I hope you uh, did enjoy that. And your ideas are absolutely welcome. So please leave them in the comments for something that you would like to see. The sky is the limit. Heck, you can even we can even do a documentary about the sky. Maybe about cats and dogs that are, you know, why is that that only cats and dogs fall from the sky? How come uh, it, you know, how come when they say raining cats and dogs, how come it's not raining something else? I, you know, I mean, <laughs> we can do a, we can do a documentary on anything, anything. So if you've got ideas, doesn't matter how crazy they are, let me know in the comments below. We'll get it together and we'll watch it together. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on another video real soon. Have a killer awesome day.